the three things you should do, the three things you should not do in a SQL interview if you are going for a data analyst, data engineer, BIE, cloud engineer round. By the end of this video, you'll have clarity as to how you should come off during an interview because it's not just about getting the right answer. So jump in. Number one, the first thing that you should not do, let's start with the nots because this confuses a lot of people. The first thing you should not do is jump right in. So as weird as this sounds, the biggest mistake we see people make during an interview is they just jump right in and start answering the question. The reality is most people do that because they've been studying a bunch of leak code for the past couple months. The problem with that is if you just jump right into the question and you're not answering the actual question, you potentially can spend 20 30 minutes of your valuable time during an interview answering the wrong thing. And so do not just jump in because here's the thing. As interviewers, we are taught to just let you ramble. That's right. If you start interviewing and you start doing your code, we will let you continue because it immediately tells us, ah, this person doesn't actually have experience in a real world environment. So let me tell you what you should do. You should ask a ton of questions. Okay. So you should ask a ton of questions during the SQL interview. Why? Because the interview questions might actually be very vague on purpose. And what they're looking for is to see if you have the ability to ask clarifying questions and probe a little more as to what their goal is so that you can actually get the right context to then answer the right question quickly. And by the way, the problem with leak coding, again, you should do it. I'm not saying you shouldn't, but the problem with leak coding is that it's not necessarily how the interview goes. You don't just sit there in front of a computer coding for 30 minutes and then they grade you on how that went. That's not typically how it, how it goes, right? They're trying to see if you can talk to a human in front of you, cross collaborate, communicate well, right? It's not just about the tech skills, right? So that's the first big do or don't. Now, I'm going to give you a second don't that is going to connect to the do that I just told you. The second don't is do not avoid hints. Okay? So don't avoid hints. Here's what I mean by that. I can't tell you how many times students ask a question just for the sake of asking the question because they've heard, oh, I need to do that. Then the interviewer tells them something and then they just completely ignore it and keep going and doing whatever they want to do. Again, the point of cross collaborating, working with other teams, working with your stakeholder, communicating well is to actually listen to what they're trying to say, work in groups with them, work as a team, and then pivot your approach because whatever they're telling you, they probably have an answer in mind, which means they want to actually see if you can implement feedback. The second to do is actually what I would say, talk out loud. So here's the thing, talking out loud during an interview is gonna let you do one of two things. Number one, if you go back here, it's actually gonna help you ask clarifying questions, okay? So talking out loud might actually trigger you to ask a question during the interview. But here's the other thing. If the interviewer sees you go on the wrong path, then they might actually jump in and give you a hint. Let's say you do at the beginning of an interview, ask a ton of questions, 20 questions. What a lot of people do after that is they start coding and then just never speak again. You have to not just ask a ton of questions at the beginning. You actually have to talk throughout the process and explain what you're talking about because the interviewer there is there to help you. He's not trying to play games, play tricks on you. They're just trying to help you. The third thing you should not do during the SQL interview is you should not wait till the end to test. So the third thing you should not do during a SQL interview is do not wait until the end to test your code. I can tell you again, it, it, they all kind of, you're, you're going to see how all these do nots kind of play a role within each other because a lot of people are doing a bunch of leak code and then just going off and, you know, sitting in front of a computer during an interview, 
writing code for 30 minutes and then realizing, oh shit, I, I messed up somewhere along the way. It's too late. You don't have enough time to go back and fix it. So what you got to do is you have to test iteratively. So that's the third thing of what you should do is actually test, test iteratively. Okay. So there's actually a really, really smart way that you can go about testing iteratively. I call this method breaking up the question. You have a SQL question, right? It's asking you for A, B, C, D, right? And it's asking you to do, you know, a, hey, find the revenue for the last five years broken down by category, right? What you can do is you can break up the question. So you could take that question, break it up into three chunks, right? So now you know, hey, I need to find revenue. I need to find it for the last five years. And I need to break it down by category. Now, all of a sudden, what starts to happen is you start to create the pseudo code for every single piece of this question. Because now you know this is a sum revenue. This is a where clause, right? With the five years. This, for example, here is a group by statement, right? So when you actually break down the question, you create the pseudo code, make your, your life easier to actually write the code. And so with that said, I'm going to give you one little surprise bonus, right? And I think this bonus is basically the overarching theme. Now, if you're liking these videos, by the way, please subscribe, like, share, right? I want to make more of these videos, but only if I see that they're having value for people. The number one overarching theme of all of this is to remember this one thing. The grading for SQL is not just, did you get the right answer? Did you get the wrong answer? It's not that. So comment below. What's a one mistake you've done in a SQL interview? And let's see if we can give you a little bit feedback and I'll see you on the other side. Bye.